I have two effort moments. One of the effort moments where, I, where I've actually had my first epiphany um, is when I actually booked Empire. Now, I have been going through a lot of shit then, and I've told you the jobs I was working previously. And I remember my boss asking to borrow some money. My boss asking me, I know, crazy. My boss asked to borrow some money. I lended it to her, and it was my last. She didn't know that. I had $370 in my account. She needed 340 of it to pay a light bill. Now, I always lend her money. I always give her stuff, things like that. Ended up giving it to her. Um, and then when I got to work, she was supposed to give me the money back. She did. She gave it back. Everybody who knows me know I didn't carry cash. Still don't carry cash. So I ended up putting the money in my purse. Her and I shared an office. And then, mysteriously, the money came up missing. And I remember confronting her, like, hey, I'm not calling you a thief, but my money missing. She, oh, you know what, I'll run the cameras back the next day, I'll, I'll. And then I remember going back to work the next day, optimistic, as my optimistic self, like, no, you know, I do a lot for this lady. She gonna, she gonna lie and say it was behind the door. She gonna say, you know, she gonna give me my money back. I was happy too, cause I was like, you know, cause I, I got, I got thirty dollars to my name. I ain't got nothing to my name. I go, I go back to work. She's like, yeah, I didn't, yeah, nothing on the camera. And I kept looking at her. Why are you here before me? You normally never come to work before me. So why are you here? And that was strange. And I remember just that cancer in me that snapped off the moody. I blacked out, and then I got suspended for two weeks, cause I don't know what happened. And that's my story, I'm sticking to it. I don't know what happened. I blacked out, I got suspended for two weeks for discourteous behavior. And during that two week suspension, I was job hunting. I had a food sanitation license and I had worked long enough to gain some experience in the field that I was in to take my license to hospitals. So I started knocking on every hospital door in Chicago. And I remember that very first week I was due back at work. The night before I was due back at work is when my brother called me in the middle of the night and said, hey, Terrence Howard is looking for female rappers in their 20s. I think you'd be dope for this opportunity. Joe said, go and, you know, the audition, whatever. And I'm like, dude, like I, I gotta go to work with a thief tomorrow. I'm, that's the last thing on my mind. I'm trying to get my thoughts together because I know I'm gonna curse this lady out. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about working next to a thief. I get to work. And sure enough, she got on my fucking nerves telling me all these different things I had to do. She changed my job description, all this crazy stuff. And I remember going in the bathroom, because us Kansas, we cried. <laughs> I had a little frog in my throat. I wanted to go in the bathroom, get my little self together, because I wanted to cry a little bit. And I remember going in there, I stuck my hand inside my pocket. There was the number. I never put that number in my pocket, because I didn't care. So I said, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna call the number, right? Call the number. And the lady was like, yeah, you know, we're looking for rappers to come at this time. And I'm just to show you how God works. He's just so amazing. He literally lined that thing up for me. I remember telling my boss, like, hey, uh, I got to go take care of some. She said, well, you are you can't come to work until noon to 8. Noon to 8, the bus stopped running at 8. The 8A stopped running at 8. So how am I going to get home? And Ubers weren't invented back then. So I said, whatever. I go audition for the stuff. Didn't know I was auditioning for a show. I just thought I was going to rap for Terrence. As I'm going through that whole process, and when they finally call me and tell me I got the role, I also got a call from a hospital saying, you got the job. So I was like, ooh, I don't know which one to take. <laughs> I really sat there and was like, I don't know which one to take. I've never acted before. I don't know what this is gonna pay me. I don't even know if this is legit. Two, I don't even know how long this is gonna last. I'm certified in this. This is what I'm good at. I know I'm good at it. But I remember going home praying for a very long time and I said, God, if this role is for me, because you knew I wanted to be some form, shape, or entertainer, whether it was a rapper, a dancer, a stripper, something. I just need to know if this time is for me. And a lot of people, and I, I love telling this story. Um, it wasn't even a second later, there was an alarm that went off. And I started looking around like, what was that? And I keep a basket full of like perfume, jewelry, just junk. And I started going through that basket of drunk junk and that was my brother's watch. So I have a little brother who was murdered back in 2014 and I kept a G-Shock of his and the alarm on the G-Shock went off. I never knew there was like a alarm on the freaking watch. I had it for five months. He had passed, he was murdered five months prior to it. that watch had never gone off. 
And when I was sitting there praying for my son, that watch went off. And the crazy thing is, the time on the watch said 8.23 p.m. 8.23 was the number I always played in the lottery and I would never fucking win. And when I took that role, and when I said fuck it all, because when I tell you I quit every job I had, I was working at City Sports, I was a freaking butcher working at Jewel Osco, and I was also working at the nursing home and as an assistant director of nutritional services. I was tired. Working from sun up to sundown, Sunday to Sunday. I was tired. When I took that role, it was the best thing I could have ever done. And A23 was the number I will always win in the lottery. I will never fucking win, but in that moment, I was a winner. That's when I said, fuck it. <laughs> It is not like your normal fucking moment, but that's when I said, fuck it. And then there was another moment. This was after my mom's passing. Whole nother epiphany. Um, I remember before she passed, I told her no. Cause mom, oh my mama know she can beg. She be begging. I need this, I need that, I need this. And we're all, she got eight kids, so she gonna get it, right? My mama was spoiled. And I remember telling her, cause she had um, heart problems and she had this heart, heart monitor that she had to always wear. And I remember them telling her she didn't have to wear it any longer. And she said, they're taking the box off. You told me you was gonna give me a massage. And I was like, mama, I'm gonna do that. I'm all the way in Jersey. <laughs> I'm working. I do it when I get there. She hit me the next day. You told me you was gonna give me a massage. <laughs> mama, what, like, I'll do it when I, I'll get there. And when I came home that night, she passed. When I flew back to Chicago, she passed. And for a very long time, I was holding on to that no, right? And I started telling everybody yes, almost as if I was making up for that one no I had told my mother. And my yeses were exhausting me. My yeses were getting me in some shit that I didn't have no business getting in. My yeses had me devaluing my work taking just anything, all these cheap ass roles, because I did not want to let anybody down until one day I said, fuck it, I'm tired. And I remember saying, no, I turned down this, I turned down two roles. And I almost feel like me turning down those two roles, people forgot about me. And they was like, who the fuck she thinks she is telling me no when they thought they were doing me a favor. You know, it was a little hard trying to get work during the pandemic, but I'm blessed. I'm on a syndicated show. We get paid forever, I'm good, right? And you know, we get residuals and stuff like that, so I'm blessed. And when I told them no, I don't know, I just, I had a really shitty two years after my mom's passing and after saying yes and no. And I was in therapy and shout out to my therapist, Love, who has been so patient, but diligent and delicate with my spirit uh, because without her, I probably wouldn't even be the giant that I am because I shrunk myself after my mother's passing. I was, I was fucked up and I was guilty about a lot of things, guilty about, about not doing things for her like I should have done. And, um, but after her passing, I learned boundaries. And instead of saying yes to everything, I'm learning no. And no isn't always a bad thing. And I remember um, going to LA. I'm by coastal but I stayed out there longer than what I would normally stay. And um, I just had to get away from my family and get away from everybody because it was too it was too noisy. It was too loud. And I remember one day I just said, like, fuck it, I'ma just be relentless with how I show up. And this time not for people. I do so much for everybody, but I never did anything for Tyronda. Somebody asked me to do something, okay, what time? When? Somebody need anything, I'm I'm on it. Nobody, like, when I tell you I'm one of the most dependable people on earth, probably the only one who do what I do, just will literally drop everything to make sure my people are taken care of. Because if you're a friend of mine, a family of mine, or anything of mine, I'm gonna take care of you. But I forgot to take care of me. And last year, I just said, fuck it, and fuck everybody. <laughs> 
And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I'm free, man. I'm so free. Fuck it. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Tyronda J, and you are tuning in to 247HH.com.